Okay, so at this point I've got the base layer of the majority of the painting complete. Um, in this piece, the issue is how to create the impasto effect on the face uh, to replicate a little bit of the style of Joseph Lee. Um, now you can see that all I've painted so far of the face is the ear. Um, I have, haven't done any of the jawline or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by painting a little bit of the edges on it uh, before applying the impasto. But before I start applying the pasto, since this face is going to be predominantly blue across here, I want to start with a blue layer um, and let that dry so that I have uh, ensured that there's a bit of a ground on the piece. You can see that in the rest of the painting I haven't actually done a ground, which has resulted in little flecks of white shining through in a few places, showing the raw canvas. And I want to make sure that really doesn't happen in the face, so I'm going to start with a layer of blue. Then I'm going to paint in some of the skin tones around the edges before doing the impasto over top. Okay, so at this point, I've painted the background, I've painted the first layer of the hair, although I still have to do some highlights the way the sun is hitting her hair and catching um, the highlights within her hair. Um, I've painted the neck and the blouse, it's a denim blouse, and now I need to finish the face. On the face, I've done a base coat of blue, and then over top of it, I've done some of the tones that exist within the face. I haven't gone all out, but I wanted to make sure the edges were done. Um, because this student is trying to achieve something similar to Joseph Lee, if you look at Joseph Lee's work, he tends to make sure that things like the jaw lines and the hair lines are done traditionally and realistically, um, but then he applies impasto over the majority of the face. He does tend to leave sections of the face still realistic, um, however, for the intentions of the student, we're just going to go as much impasto as possible over top of the face. Um, on my palette, I've got that mix of skin tones that I was using, and I've got a range of blues, and I'm going to use that to do impasto. Now, generally when you do impasto, um, you can use a brush, absolutely, that is part of it, um, but uh, because she wants sort of a, a more uh, dragged effect, we're definitely going to focus on palette knives. Now, the one problem is since we're doing this at the school, I don't have proper palette knives. I have really, really big ones, which are far too big for this canvas. You can see the size of it in comparison. So I'll use this very sparingly, probably just that edge, maybe that edge, definitely not these two edges. And I've got some knives from some takeout containers. Um, Ideally, you should have reasonably sized palette knives. Most schools have them. We just don't currently have any in stock right now. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to use the palette knife to drag the colors you need in certain areas to create the overall effect of the face, but pulled apart um, using thick sections of acrylic paint. Um, I probably will use the brush a little bit in some areas, but I'll just make sure that I'm applying the paint thickly. Um, as you can see in some areas of the hair, the paint is still stuck up quite high and it's in coming in chunks. So I can still do that in some areas and just leave it to dry and hopefully by the end of it, it should achieve the overall effect. Um, now to start this, I think I'm going to start by putting in some of the darker tones and then just layering the lighter and then the lightest on top of it. Impasto is not something I'm familiar with. Um, generally, I, uh, I, it's not the style that I paint in. I probably haven't painted in, with this sort of technique, painting with a palette knife, using acrylics of a person probably since I was in the first year of university. So it's been a long, long time, but we're just going to give that a try. Okay, for this next part, I'm going to get a little bit off the plan that the student had presented to me. And I'm not going to stick to just blue in the background. I'm going to, sorry, blue on the face in the impasto. I'm going to add um, a little bit of Naples yellow. I probably should have used a cleaner knife. Give me one second. Um, 
to kind of accentuate the highlights a little bit. In Joseph Lee's work, he very rarely sticks to monochrome palette. That was a, a choice made by the student. Um, so I'm about to either mess this up entirely or improve it. I just don't know. Oh yeah, messed it up entirely. That's okay. Things can dry and things can be fixed. So let's actually mix that Naples yellow better into the blue and white and get a color that makes a bit more sense. Whoops. Okay, now I really want to accentuate that cheekbone. So I'm going to use a nice strong color and I've now made a mess of the nostril. Um, you can see very much that this is a give and take sort of thing. Sometimes you mess something up, you have to go back and fix it. That's okay. I had relatively liked that nostril, but I made a mess of it and so be it. Now I have options. I can scrape off the paint or I can build over top of it. Um, I think the best option in this case is going to be to scrape off some of this uh, because I do want it to dry. So I've taken off that bit of too bright Naples yellow and I'm going back to that color I've mixed. And I think I'm actually going to switch back to the large palette knife, but it does need it clean because it's rather messy. Currently covering my desk with acrylic paint. Um, students, please remember, use a big piece of paper underneath, okay? Because, you know, mess. More to clean up, more work in the long run. Okay, so um, I want to try to get that shape of the nose. Um, because the length of the nose is approximately the length of this palette knife, I want to load this palette knife up with the color I've created. Um, and I'm going to use that to just kind of block that nose in as long as I place it in roughly the right spot. Okay, now although that top section is a bit of a mess and needs to be worked on, um, it's a little bit closer to what I had intended. It's not perfect. Like I said, it's got a ways to go. Okay, so now that I've relatively successfully done the face in impasto, now I can go in and add some of the details. Now I can't finish this actually until all this section dries completely, um, but I can fix up a couple areas here that I've made a mess of on the background um, just to kind of speed up the whole process. Um, so I'm just going to try to match my colors a little bit and paint over. Um, obviously because it's coming out a little green, I'm going to have to rework it a bit. Um, but you can see that any spot that I went over, since I didn't tape down before I started, because I didn't, wasn't sure how that would work out, quite frankly, if it would become too harsh, um, or even if I could get the paint up after putting up so much thick acrylic paint, um, I'm just going to block those in a little bit and I'll fix that section as it dries. Um, the other areas that I need to fix are kind of along the hairline, so I'm going to need that section to dry, but I can, at this point, um, bring in some of the highlights into her hair, um, just because of how the sun is hitting it. 